Hello and welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. I was over at uh, C4D Cafe the other day and they had a tutorial uh, for Cinema 4D and making Newton's Cradle. So I gave it a shot and this is what I came up with and rendered in view. Here is the Cinema 4D version that I created. It's always a, uh, a fun little toy. A neat little model to build and I thought well you know it's it's pretty easy I think we could uh, make something like this in hexagon so dusted off my copy of hexagon and we're gonna make a model of Newton's cradle uh, to begin with I'm gonna create a sphere and I'm just gonna leave all these settings at default validate that I want to center it in my scene, so I'm going to zero out the X and Y values. Now I'm going to come over here to a right view. And let me zoom out a little bit. I'm going to come over here to lines and choose my polygon line. Now I'm going to come over here to properties. I want to be able to see the back face. That's the bottom, not that one. Okay, I don't want picture. There we are. I want to be able to see my back grid. So I think what I will do is I will expand this a little bit more. Come down here to a wire frame. Now I'm going to make the threads that the sphere is suspended from. So use my polyline tool and I'm going to click up here on this intersection here on my background grid and I'm going to come down here in the center of my ball and then come back over here and click on this intersecting this intersection of my grid and I'll validate that and I'll call this curve a uh, string and this will be sphere come back to a perspective view now we need to take our string and center it along the X and the Z I'm gonna leave the Y its Y coordinates right where it is now I'm going to select both of these and group them together, group to root. I don't need my back ground grid anymore, but I will need the bottom grid. So now I'm going to create four groups of my objects here. I'm going to come over to Utilities and Multiple Copies, and I'll just dial in number four and I will put all four of these groups here in, into one main group. Now I'm going to switch to a top view and let's move this over towards the center of our scene. There we are. Now I'm going to create the steel support for this uh, object for these objects. Come back over here to lines and I want polyline. I'm going to click, let me see, from the edge of the sphere, I want to come over one, two, three uh, grid spaces. So I'm going to come right over here to this grid intersection. I'm going to click. I'm going to hit my space bar so now it constrains the movement of my polyline only to only along the horizontal axis. So I clicked here. I'm going to come over one more grid. Click at that intersection. And I'm going to come over to let me see this is from the edge. One, two, one, two. I want to click here. create a point, 
click there, create a point. I'm going to hit my space bar, and now it constricts this to the vertical axis. Click here. Now, space bar again. I want to move back horizontally. Uh, click there. And click here to create a point, and click there to create a point. I'm just going to click close off, and it'll close off that that line. I come back to perspective view. What I want to do is click on points, click on that point, click on that point, click on the other two endpoints, and I'm just going to stretch them down like that. And now I'm just going to expand them out, give a little lateral support, and let me hide my modeling grid. Now let's take our uh, object here and give a little thickness, our support. Come over to Surface Modeling, click on Thickness. Actually, let me abort that. What I want to do is, with the points uh, enabled, I'm going to control A to select all the points. Now I'm going to use my chamfer tool, and I'm just going to create a nice little chamfer on this, and I will give it a point or a range of 10. And that looks good. Now I'll add some thickness to that. And I'll bump the number of points up to, oh, I'll bring it up to 16. That looks good. I'll call this frame. Now I'm going to open up my groups here. And I'm going to uh, apply some thickness to the string. So I'm just going to hold down control and click on string come up here to give it some thickness I'll bring my number of points down to 10 and dial down this number till it's just well till it looks like thin little pieces of string or thread that are suspending these spheres let's close up our group and let's take a look at what we've got and that is a Newton's Cradle. Pretty simple, very easy to model, and uh, they're always neat little gizmos when you apply some uh, metallic material to them and render them in a high quality uh, lighting or, or rendering scheme. This was done with global radiosity and uh, rendered fairly quickly. I just used um, um, a silver metallic material on them and just standard black, flat black for my strings. Now one thing I did do when I created these spheres, I created them to be very low resolution because when I import it into view, I'm going to replace them with view spheres. Let me export this. <coughs> and come over here into view and we will import it and I'll show you how to replace the spheres with view primitives and show you the benefit of it. Let's do a simple little render. Okay, so here's our render in view and notice the low polygon count of our spheres. They look pretty uh, blocky. And notice also our polygon count 3,874. Well, we could have created high polygon spheres in view and then rendered them, but we would have created very high polygon spheres. So, Here's a uh, much easier way to go about creating high, um, 
high uh, resolution models with low polygon count. I'm going to ungroup all this, this mess here. And let me single out my sphere. I'll probably have to ungroup everything. Ungroup. Ungroup. Now, um, view um, merged all these together, so I want to keep them separate. So I'll just simply give them slightly different names. That way, view won't combine them all into one model. Sphere uh, 4. I want this to be sphere 3. And the threads or the string, I don't care about. It can do whatever it wants with that. Okay, now we'll export this. Yes, okay. Now we'll import this into view. Import. Okay, so we see how blocky these, these spheres are. Let's select our spheres. Now remember our polygon count, 3,874. Select our spheres, right click, replace by, and keep proportions. We're going to replace by with spheres. Well, it was 3,874 or 784, and now we're, we've, we've lost a lot of um, our polygon count. And I'll pause it here, and we will render this, and you'll see the much much improved difference. And there you go. We've lost, what, 700-something uh, uh, polygons, and we have absolute perfect spheres the, with very high res resolution. And the reason is because we're using native primitives in view versus 3D objects that we would have otherwise exported as a wavefront object. So that is uh, creating Newton's Cradle. A uh, pretty simple little model, and it's always one of those fun little, fun little objects to put on a desk uh, or over in a bookcase uh, in your view render. So I hope this uh, was informative for you and helped you out with your modeling skills. So thanks for watching here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.